In the Bible, in Luke chapter 15, verse 8 to 10, Jesus tells a story. Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Okay, but before I even go any further, let's just look at what her backstory was. So in G- when Jesus was walking on this earth, in the, taking on the form of man, we know first century Israel, this woman has no say, no vote, no Bible study, formally anyway, and no defense. But she has 10 coins, and each is worth, each of these coins is worth a day's wage. So this is not a penny. I, I looked up what's the average wage in the U.S. today. The average daily wage is $220 a day. That sounds amazing, but I know there's, it's an average. <laughs> so there's Bill Gates, and then there's other people. Uh, but that average averages out to 220 a day. So each coin is worth 220 and she has 10 coins. So she has $2,200 in coins. Okay, so th- this is not nothing. This is a significant amount of, uh, of money here. Now, how did this woman in first century Israel, how did she get those? Well, perhaps she was holding on to these valuable coins for someone else. Perhaps she was like guarding them, you know, holding on to them. Or perhaps she had just worked really hard. Uh, maybe she sewed, uh, sewed clothing. She might have even weaved the fabric, woven the fabric, sewed clothing, and gone door to door and said, you know, would you like to buy some clothing? I, I don't know how she came up with this large amount of coins, but she has them. Maybe she's been scrimping and saving until finally she's got the capital to start her own business. Like maybe she's going to buy a, a, a loom or, a, you know, some, some, it wouldn't be a sewing machine like today, but perhaps she's, she's like going to rent a spot in the market or something. So these coins are most likely very important to her. So she kept these coins hidden away, but every day she brought them out and counted them because they're valuable, right? And and so she just wanted to make sure that they were all there. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, everything's going good, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wait just a second. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. One's missing. This matters. This is a lot of money. And this, was, this money meant something to her. This, this was important to her, important enough that she would count it every day. So she just looked, you know, like, did I just drop it just now? Like when I poured it out? Like, where is it? Oh, no. She runs to her hiding place. She looks in her hiding place. It's not there. She knows no one's been in the house. Oh, no. What, do you, what should I do like this? Oh, no. One of my co- a tenth of my coins are gone. She runs to some neighbors, and she says, somebody help me. You, you got to pray. She goes to a couple of the gals that, that live nearby. Pray for me. Pray to the God of heaven that he would help me find those coins. Some of those friends said, I'm going to do even more than pray. I'm going to come and join you. So a couple friends come, or, come with her, and they're like, we're going to find it. I know it's got to be there somewhere. Jesus goes on in Luke chapter 15, verse 8. He, so he says, uh, oh, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? So she lights a lamp, because there's no electricity back then, to look in all the corners and just sweep over everything. Today, we'd get our iPhone flashlight. By the way, this is Pastor Shelly and I trying to see a menu in a restaurant. <laughs> Do they have steak on here? I don't know. I can't read it. <laughs> and then sometimes we have to do this. I don't know why we have glasses. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why. But this woman is doing that. She is, she's got a lamp 
that she's lit. So this would be like an oil lamp with a wick. She's lit the lamp. She's looking everywhere, but in the corners behind stuff. The, she and her friends, they slide away some of her simple furniture. She's got a couple of chairs, a table, a, a cot to sleep on. They're moving everything, looking under it, sweeping. They lift up the pillows. They move her clothes, what she has from here to there, just kind of shaking them out. Look, they're looking everywhere for this lost coin. She takes a broom, so it would have been a stick and some brush, maybe some dead branches that are tied together to make a broom. She sweeps, so like, it's, I don't know if it was a dirt floor, but she's, she's sweeping. She's getting everything. She sweeps away the ashes that are around the wood-fired oven just to think, is the coin there? Is it there? They're looking everywhere for this coin. This woman goes to great lengths. Someone say great lengths. Great. She goes to great lengths to find that coin. Jesus goes on in the story, verse 9. And when she finds it, first of all, I love that Jesus said, and when. And when she finds it, because she is not stopping until she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. She found it. Woo! This is so great. She thanks her friends or helped her, who helped her, and, and she says, go get your families, go get your husbands, go get your kids, bring them over here because we are going to celebrate because I found my lost coin. There it is. <laughs> she found it. They all, the friends come over, the families come over, they do a Mediterranean style circum dance, circum, uh, circle dance. <laughs> I don't know what circumstance was. Circle dance, you know, da, 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 like that. They're happy. They're eating raisins. They're eating almonds. It's, it's great. And every time she thinks of this day in the future, she'll always smile when she remembers the day I found my lost coin. That is going to be the day that she will remember forever because it was such an important thing to her. In verse, uh, Luke 15, verse 10, Jesus wraps up the story this way. In the same way, somebody say the same way. Amen. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. In the same way, like go get everybody, we're going to celebrate, have food, and a circle dance because a lost sinner repents. So Jesus wasn't really talking about lost coins here. He was talking about lost people. He was talking about lost people. What does lost mean? The dictionary says lost refers to someone who's gone astray or missed the way. Someone who's gone astray or missed a way. For example, a lost child. Someone who is bewildered as to where they are or how to get to where they need to be. That is the definition of a lost. But sadly, it can also describe those who are spiritually condemned to suffer eternal punishment. As in lost soul. Dictionary definition. As in lost soul soul. Jesus is the shepherd who has a hundred sheep, and if he loses one, he searches until he finds her, and then he rejoices. Jesus is that woman who had ten coins, and if he loses one, he searches for him until he finds it, and then rejoices. Jesus reveals to us the heart of the father who watches for his lost son, even though that lost son took all the father's money and ran. When that son came home, the father rejoices. These three stories that Jesus told about lost and found all tell us this. God cares about those who are lost, those who have lost their way, those who are destined for an eternity without God in torment, God cares 
and does not want anyone to be lost. Lostness is avoidable. Lostness has a solution. There is a way to be found. God does not want anyone lost. In fact, we know from these three stories, I just told the, the middle story today, but we've, over past weeks we've been talking about the other stories. We know that God is a seeker. God is a searcher for people. God is a finder. God loves nothing better than to search for someone who is lost and find them and bring them home. That's God's favorite. He loves that. That's who he is. God goes to great lengths to seek and find lost people to bring them home to himself. It is not God's will that anybody be lost. No one, zero, zip. God does not want anyone to be lost. And so he's gone to great lengths to seek for them. Why? Why does God care so much about this? You know, I, I tried to think of why that woman cared so much about that, those coins, but we're, it's, we're learning something about God here. Why does God care so much? Why does he go to great lengths to seek and find lost people to bring them home? Well, first of all, I, th I thought of a couple reasons. One reason is because being lost is painful for all concerned. Being lost is painful for all concerned. We see the, the illustration of the, of the woman who lost a coin. That was painful for her. Oh, no, this is bad. This, a, a tenth of my wealth is just gone. Like, this matters. This hurts. It matters enough to I'm going to do something about it. In one sense, all the people on the planet are God's children. God is the father of us all. He's the creator of us all. God is the father of fatherhood. So in one sense, God's everybody's father. And he created us for relationship with him. He wants a family. God has his family in heaven, and he wants his family on earth as well. God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God loves us. And so the problem is our sin has separated us from God. Our sin breaks our relationship with him. We're all born in sin. Me too. Everybody. We're all born in sin. It is our condition, and then it becomes our practice. <laughs> but it starts as our condition. So we're born estranged from God. You know that term, term estranged? It, it implies that there was a connection and it's been broken. Like a family connection, I'm estranged from this relative or that relative or whatever. Estranged means there was a, a relationship and it's been broken. We're all lost in sin and we all are in need of salvation. Necesitamos salvación. All of us. Jesus' heart breaks every day for those who are far from God. In other words, the lost. That's what we mean, the lost. So it's painful for God when someone's lost, but it's also painful to be the lost person living under the weight of sin. We all have a weight of sin on our shoulders. And it, it is painful to have this feeling like something's missing in my life. I got a lot of things are going well, doing okay financially, my relationship's pretty good, but there's still something missing. That is painful because we are made to have a relationship with God. So if you don't have that relationship, something's missing. It's like this deep down thing. For, for years, I've talked about this before on Sundays, but for years I was dehydrated. And I would not listen to the people closest to me, thanks, hon, about that I just needed to drink more water. But I just wasn't aware that I was dehydrated. I, I didn't realize that's why I have dizziness and nosebleeds. And the amazing thing happened is once I started drinking water, those two things went away. It is amazing. But I wasn't even aware that something was missing. But so, if you don't have a relationship with God, something is missing. There's a beautiful, wonderful thing that is missing from your life. And I'm just going to be a little transparent here. Your future's not looking so good in the next life. There is a heaven. 
There is a hell. Here's who God wants to go to hell. No one. So much so, he does not want anyone to go there. You know what the Bible says hell is? It's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. That's why there's a hell. God does not want any people to go there, so he has gone to great lengths to find you so you don't have to go there. That's not for you. That's not made for you. Blech. We don't want to go there in the next life. So it's painful if you're God and, and there's a lost person. It's painful if you are the lost person. But it's also painful when someone that you know about or that you care about is lost. That is painful when someone that you know is lost from God. So God goes to great lengths to seek and find lost people Be, because being lost is painful for all concerned. In the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says this, Christ, or Jesus, suffered for our sins. Wait a minute. He suffered for our sins? That's right. He's sinless. He never sinned, but he died for sinners, to bring you safely home to God. I don't know about you, but dying for someone else's crime, that seems like going to great lengths. God has gone to great lengths to save you, to help you not be lost, and to help the people in your circle not be lost. He doesn't want anyone lost. So after Jesus died, though, on the cross, he rose from the grave, and he gave the church his mission. He said, okay, I'm going to just go away. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. Now you go into all the world and bring people safely home to God. That's what God does when he seeks someone. He brings them to him. God also, so God goes to great lengths to seek and find lost people because it's painful. Lostness is painful. But also, on the flip side, there's crazy joy when the lost are found. And that's what these three lost and found stories tell. In all three stories, there is a great celebration when someone is found. When the lost is found, there's a huge celebration. Heaven rejoices. And Jesus has been there. He knows what heaven's like. And he's given us a glimpse into heaven. And he's, he's like, you're not going to believe this. But every time a lost sinner repents, like Garen, me, when Garen repents, Heaven goes, whoa, this is so awesome. And they have a feast and a circle dance because they're just rejoicing. It's so great. The, in Jesus' lost and found stories, the shepherd rejoices when he finds the lost sheep. The woman rejoices when she finds her lost coin. And the father rejoices with a fatted calf feast. That sounds like Dr. Seuss. A beast I will eat from the east to the west. I don't know. Like I, I, I'm not Dr. Seuss. James chapter 5 19 to 20 in the Bible says this, my dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you, now that phrase jumped out at me as I was studying this, wait a minute, wait, if someone from your church wanders away from the truth, or if a sheep or a lost coin, if someone that's not even in the church wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings that sinner back from wandering, from lostness, will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Okay, this is a powerful verse because God is wanting you and I to know that if you can reach out to help a lost person be found to God, you're going to do something really great for that person. Because that person is going to be saved from spiritual death. Our physical bodies might, might die. There might be a funeral for us. But when you have put your faith in Jesus, you have eternal life. Amen. So your spirit is still alive and you're in heaven. Woo! Circle dancing, eating raisins and almonds. It's great. I know there's going to be a lot of eating in heaven because after Jesus rose from the dead, every time we see him, he is eating. You got any fish? Jesus loves to eat with people. So they're going to be eating up there for sure. It changes everything when someone who is away from God. So remember, 100% of us start out away from God. All of us. All of us. And it changes everything when someone who's away from God comes back to God. 
When the lost are found, they're saved from spiritual death. And they are forgiven from that weight of sin. That pain is lifted from their lives. Wow. And the person who did the finding gets to rejoice. That could be you. That could be me. Another place in the Bible, in, in 2 Corinthians 5.18 and 20, it says this, God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Like, picture what an ambassador does for a country. We're, we're Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us, through you, through me. We speak for Jesus, for Christ, when we plead, come back to God. Because who does God want to be lost? No one. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. And so if I could just boil down this whole message into just one phrase, it would be this. Jesus goes to great lengths to find lost people through you. Jesus goes to great lengths to find lost people through you. So many times Jesus is willing, waiting, working, and wondering, when are we going to get, when are we gonna get this show on the road? When will you or I actually bring someone safely home to God? But things get in our way, let's be honest. What kinds of things get in our way of helping lost people find God? Well, maybe you just don't see or notice that there are people around you who are lost from God. They've gone astray, or they just like all of us, or they've wandered away, or they just can't see how to get to God themselves. Maybe you just don't notice. Or maybe you've forgotten what it feels like to be lost. Maybe you don't remember that longing, that, that something missing in your life, and it's God. Or maybe you've lost sight of why it's so bad, why it's so painful to be lost. Maybe you think you have plenty of time to help that lost person that you know come back to God. Or maybe you just don't know where to start, so you procrastinate. Maybe it seems like such a bother or so much work. Well, Jesus told another story. I'm not going to read the whole story today, but it's about a priest, a temple worker, and a social outcast. They walked into a road, and they saw a man lying beside the road, and he had been robbed, beaten, and left for dead. The hero of that story is the good Samaritan who went to great lengths to bring that lost person home. He transported him. He bandaged him up. He got him to a hotel. He paid his bill, and he said, I'm going to come back in a couple days and check on him and make sure if if he has any other medical bills or lodging bills, I will pay for them. That's the hero in God's mind. I have a hero in our congregation, and his name is Jordan. Jordan has a brother named Will. Will's in a rough situation, probably in a dangerous situation, at least dangerous to himself. I've met Will. He's been here. He's taken some steps towards Jesus, but he's also taken some steps the other way. Jordan has lost contact with Will. And Jordan's heart is breaking. Jordan loves his brother. And he wants to make sure that Will's okay. Most of all, he wants Will to know Jesus. To be safely home at God's table. He wants Will to know that Jesus loves him. That Jesus has eternal life for him. So Jordan has gone to great lengths to try to find Will. So many times when we gather together for prayer gatherings or men's group on Sunday nights, he asks for prayer for Will because he cares about Will. Jordan has texted him. He's tried calling him. He's looked on social media. just trying to find him. He goes on drives looking for Will. He goes, he, he, he's, he's talked to different people that, that say, well, he, you might find him over in this area. You might find him over there. He just goes driving trying to find Will, just wants to reconnect with him. 
And I just want to say, Will, if we're, by chance you're watching this, this service, I want you to know Jordan loves you. And Jordan is looking for you. And he's gone to great lengths to find you. Please reach out to him. And Will, I want you to know that Jesus has been going to great lengths. Jesus loves you. He has been working through Jordan to try to give you eternal life. And I want you to know, Jordan, we are going to rejoice with you in a big old circle dance when Will comes home. And we're believing for that with you. We're going to rejoice when Will is found. Jesus is going to great lengths to find Will through Jordan. But Jesus is also going to great lengths to find lost people through you. I want to invite you just to be renewed in how you think about the lost in your life. Maybe it would help you if you think about the painfulness of lostness. So picture some people that you know that appear to be far from God. That appear to maybe not know how to get to him. He seems so distant to them. Picture some of those people and, and think about the pain that God feels, the pain that they feel, the pain that you feel. Or on the flip side, think about the joy of foundness. Think about what a celebration there will be. And picture some people in your circle, people that are in your extended family, friends, coworkers, classmates. Think about some of those people. Picture them and picture the joy on their face when they're found. Picture the joy on the faces of other people who are praying for those people. You might ask yourself three questions. Who's missing? Who's missing from God's table right now? Who do you know? Who, are, uh, who do you see in your circle? Who is missing from God's table? Who is lost to God? Another question. Who could you invite to hang out? We, we don't necessarily have to do anything except for one thing. It's a four-letter word. Love. That's what Jesus has called us to do. Who could you love? And let Jesus go through great lengths through you. Who, who could you go get coffee with? Who could you go fishing with? Who could you go see a Mariners game with? Who could you just reach out to with a phone call? Maybe you think about, we, we uh, filled out a prayer card a few weeks ago, actually when we started this service, uh, of just people we're praying for, that they, that they would be found to Jesus. Maybe you start with one of those people and just reach out to them. Or who could you invite to Easter? It's, this is the perfect time. Christmas is a season. Easter is a day. So it's just a very concrete day. And I invited someone yesterday. I, I, I keep, um, I keep our, our Easter invite cards in my wallet. And I just simply say this. I don't know if you have a good church to, to go to for Easter. I'm assuming everyone wants to go. Why not? I don't know if you have a good church to go to for Easter, but I would love to invite you to ours. I think we have a great church. I handed one out yesterday at the bank to the banker as I was getting the coins. <laughs> Who could you invite to God's table? Let's, let's begin to think. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to ask God to lead us. This is a time of year where we are preaching the good news. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be good news on Easter. Spoiler alert, Jesus rose. <laughs> so awesome. Would you stand to your feet with me? And let's pray. Let's just take a moment to pray about this. Would you close your eyes with me? We, you don't have to close your eyes when you pray. But it is sort of helpful to just shut out distractions. I invite you to, to close your eyes. What is prayer? Prayer is just simply talking to God in your real voice, in your real language, from your real heart. It's not being fakey or formulaic. It's just 
talking to God and listening to God. That's prayer. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you went to great lengths to find me. I was lost. I was heading a direction I should not have been heading. I was heading for a direction of great pain. And yet you went to great lengths, you found me. Thank you, Lord, for the people, uh, uh, many of the people in this room right now. You went to great lengths to find them. You worked through other people. You spoke to them directly. You wanted us to be safely home with you. Lord, I pray that you begin to help us to just look up a bit and notice the people in our lives who also are lost, just like I was, just like we were. Bring them to our heart right now, Lord. Help us to avoid that pain of lostness. Help us to embrace the joy of foundness. Help us to do our part. So if you're willing to pray this prayer, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're willing to say, Jesus, I know you're working really hard. I'm open to you working really hard through me. Go to great lengths through me to find a lost person. If you're willing to pray that prayer, would you just raise your hand? Lord, you see our hands raised, and we're just saying, Lord, thank you for finding us. We're willing to help someone else find you, help someone else be found. I'm willing. Jesus, I'm willing. Work through me. Work through me, Lord. Work through us, Lord. You can put your hands down, Lord. Renew our minds, Lord God. Help us to think right. Help us to think like you think. Help us to have the heart of God. Help us just to absolutely love everybody that you put in our lives, Lord God. In Jesus' name. And with your head still bowed, I just want to give you one other invitation. Perhaps, just like me, you are lost, just like I was. Perhaps, you don't really have a relationship with God. Perhaps God seems distant to you. I just want you to know right now, Jesus is looking for you. He cares about you. You matter to him, and he wants you found. He wants you found. If you would like to be found by Jesus today, then I'm just going to invite you to put your faith in him to save you and to forgive you of your sin. How do you do that? Turn away from your sins, turn your life over to God, and let him lead you. Make him your leader. You be his apprentice. If you would like to make that decision today to be found, put your faith in Jesus, every head's bowed, would you just raise your hand? And when you raise your hand right now, that just tells me, Pastor, pray for me. I like to be found. Yeah, I see you, man. That's goes. Yep, I see you. That's so cool. Are there others? Yep, I see you, ma'am. Yep. Yep. People right now are, are, are giving their life to Jesus. This is amazing. Thank you, Lord. This is what I'd like to do. If you raised your hand or if you kind of wish you had, maybe your heart's beating, I want to just lead you in a prayer and just coach you a bit. There's no magic prayer, but I, I just want to lead you. And so I'm just going to ask you to repeat after me, but say this to God from your heart. And church, let's just all do this together. Let's just all together pray this prayer. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I want to be found. I want a place at your table. I choose to follow you. Lead me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And can we just rejoice a little bit? So some folks are putting their faith in Jesus. That is awesome. That is excellent. So that is like step one of a lifelong journey. And we, we have got uh, a, just a, a course for you, an online course for you to learn about how to follow Jesus. And Pastor Christian will tell us a little bit more about that. I want to encourage you to follow Jesus and take that course. But here's the next step. 
Just be here every Sunday morning. Just, just be here. Let's just start there, and let's walk together and follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor Gary. That was such a good word. <laughs> wow. Well, as you go into this week and start thinking of how you can seek and save the lost, remember, there is nothing more powerful than a personal invitation, inviting them to church, inviting them to be your friend, inviting them to find Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, if you did fill out those Connect cards, which I counted you, you should have, I think so. Um, please put them in the box in the back <laughs> so we, we can connect with you guys. Also, just like Pastor Garen said, um, if you're new to following Jesus, please stop by the booth. The following Jesus, there's a booth. There's a big black banner in the lobby. We have a swag bag for you. It's got a book and a free course. Also details on the next baptism that's gonna hap that's gonna happen. Also, if you want, if you accepted Jesus today and you want to get baptized, like it's here. So, like <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So come see us if you want to get baptized today. Um, other than that, um, we need some help setting up for groups tonight. Just a couple guys if the, or, or gals, if you could stay after and help us set up in the back and over here. And then we'll see you next week. God bless.